Great, so my name is Irene Hermosa. I am a predoctoral researcher at Transmedia Catalonia. I'm in my second year of my PhD. And I am a dark hair um, girl <laughs> with a uh, fringe, green eyes. I am very pale, especially now that we are in semi-lockdown. And I'm wearing a black jumper. So um, my idea for this presentation, I have been inspired by the previous days. And I wanted to talk to you about the, the challenges. Uh, I wanted to make the most out of this cross-fertilization idea that we have going on. And I just wanted to share with you some some ideas that I have with uh, challenges and, and methodological issues we've had when researching opera or description. So, um, I am a working member of the RAD project, which is led by Carmen Mangirona and Amatamala. And it's an audio description project that has four branches. The first one studies uh, the translation of audio description scripts. Uh, then another one does the, the um, and game accessibility, so video games. We have also our branch, the operatic branch. And there's also um, the one that studies um, the voice aspect of audio description. So I don't want to bore you too much with um, all that we're, that we're doing in the operatic branch, because I'm also going to cover it in the arts that conference just in a couple of, of months. So just very quickly, we're combining several methodologies within this branch. We're doing descriptive studies, process and user-centered um, studies as well. So the first, the first thing, the first step we took was to present a state of the art of the delivery approaches in the, in the scenic arts. So are we using live audio description, semi-live, automated, what's going on. Um, then I'm going to, well, we're currently doing um, a corpus, a corpus study, which is also the focus of my PhD. And we're going to interview audio describers, operatic audio describers, and then do a study with users as well. So some factors that have dictated our methodologies. It's very important to remark that opera is a performing art and is therefore life in nature. So this will have some effects throughout. Uh, I'll be explaining them. The sampling for the corpus and the user study is also a bit tricky. And what we want to do, I was also inspired by previous presentations. We want to have clear methodologies, clear studies, uh, that others are able to replicate. So let's let's jump into the linguistic aspect of the of the research. Um, so what we are what we can bring to the table are um, the characteristics of opera audio description scripts. So we're going to assess lexical complexity, legibility, register, semantics, all, all of this. So we are going to compare um our scripts with previous uh, corpus studies on audio description namely film and museum which are the most researched one in this regard uh, language wise um, and also with um, samples of general language so um, how does uh, spanish and catalan opera differ from just general language use right but also, and here come the challenges, it is difficult to, well, representativeness is an ideal in corpus linguistics. So we, we want to aim for it, but um, well, it's not, it's not uh, black or white, right? Um, we're going to put into practice some um, quantitative justifications, qualitative as well. So why are we choosing the sample that we're choosing? Um, there are some formula, mathematical formulae for, for saying how many texts are enough texts, but also we, we have to um, also um, just choose um, the, the scripts 
with um, with an idea of uh, covering different um, scenographies, some some different styles, contemporary and also traditional. Um, we have to cover different audio describers throughout the years and so on. That's what I mean with qualitative uh, justifications. Also, um, in the scope of corpus linguistics, some measurements are influenced by the size of the corpus. So I'm thinking, for example, type of token ratio, which is um, which is a, a measurement um, that tells us about the lexical variety in a corpus. So um, is, a, is a word repeated many times? Are there many different words or are the same words repeated over and over again? So that's type of token ratio. And it, this measurement in particular is heavily influenced by the size of the corpus. So this makes it difficult to compare our corpus with others. And a possible solution is the standardized type of token ratio measurement which um, calculates the, the same thing, but in a thousand word chunks. The problem is that previous corpora have, some have uh, presented the results in type of token ratio and some others have done standardized type of token ratio. So we're gonna add both. Okay, so we can compare ourselves with all previous corpora. Also, can we extrapolate our results um, from one language to another? And I'd say no, because we're not taking into account the morpholinguistic morpho aspects that are typical of each language. And also, we don't have recorded versions for all of our scripts. So we cannot assess measurements such as words per second, because we don't know, we don't have the audio of the audio description. We only have the text. And we don't know, we don't know the effect of prosody and so on. So these are some of the shortcomings. Um, then we're doing a semiotic analysis on the corpus and we're asking what are the most salient signs in our pro description? And also, does this mean that these, um, these signs that are so, so focused on um, in the audio description scripts are also the most characteristic of, of, of contemporary opera? And we, we will be asking the describers about it and the users about it. What are they interested in? Why do they go to the opera? Um, however, we cannot call um, our study multimodal because, we, again, we're lacking um, the audio, right? Since um, most, of our, most of our scripts were live, we have the, um, the text in, in, our, in a word, in a, in a TXT, but we don't have the recording, right? So no multimodal analysis um, available for us. For the reception study, we want to combine um, a focus group and questionnaires. And this, was, this is gonna be very interesting because the sample of participants is quite rare. So this was gonna be a group of older audio description users that have never attended an audio described opera. So they, they don't live in Madrid or Barcelona. Um, and they do go to the theater quite often. They have uh, different accessible cultural activities available to them. But um, it's, it's a first time for them. And also they suggested that they, we wanted to personalize the experience for them. And they requested a zarzuela, which is a Spanish form of operetta which um, has both singing and spoken word. So this is just a, an example of uh, how they're gonna be able to influence us, let's say. However, this was the focus group and the, the opera itself, the Zarzuela itself, and the questioners were meant to happen in March last year, well, this year, and we all, we all know what went down. So we, we find ourselves uh, a bit, um, waiting to see what happens with in-person research and also with the scenic arts just in general. Right now, well, in Barcelona, for example, we're just about to be able to go back to the theater and so on, but we'll see when it's rescheduled and so on. We can uh, switch uh, uh, the, first, uh, the first part of our study to an online focus group, but again, these users will 
very much elderly uh, people. So we're not sure whether they, they will be up for it. And lastly, I want to touch on something that we're not, sadly, we won't have the time to cover in our branch of the project, but I, I've been giving it a lot of thought and the idea of experimental research applied to the to opera or description to the scenic arts in general comes with a few challenges as well. So it's not the same uh, to have live stimuli in the in a in a opera house than to, to watch a recorded opera, right? So this poses some some challenges regarding ecological validity. So um, the the idea would be to do Mm, experimental research in the in the opera house if we want to be ecologically valid um, and then again are we able to bring bulky tools into the theater i was thinking about portable options which could be neurocognitive testing which is manual and therefore um is more prone to well to errors so to say, because it's, it's self-assessment um, test and so on, just, just after a, an act, for example, and well, it's not, it's not as, you know, it's not as, um, as strict or as, um, I, don't know how to, I don't know how to put it, but it's not eye tracking, let's, let's just say that. And also electroderma, electroderma activity. Uh, this could also, because since since the um, the tools itself are smaller, this could be an option for experimental research in opera. So this is it from me. I, I didn't want to take up too much time. Um, I hope you found it useful. I just wanted to bring up, you know, to spark some conversation with my peers as well, since, you know, I'm sure they're facing similar challenges as I am. Uh, and that's it from me.